the network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is an AV Nation special. Re-engaging with Rosie Rivers. This time I'll ride with Aviation Nation with an Aviation Nation special talking about Rosie Riveters darn near a year uh, from the time that we talked last year. And with me to talk about it, of course, is Miss Erica Carroll. Welcome, ma'am. Hi, Tim. And, of course, Jennifer Goodyear. Welcome, ma'am. Hi, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Uh, before we get started with Rosie Riveters, I, I also want to point out the fact that these two fantastic women in the AV industry have... Uh, have been nice enough to join us and uh, are now the host of our Women in AV podcast. Um, as of this recording, you have two under your belt? Yes, awesome. so far. <laughs> One's posted, I know. One's in, in the yeah. process. Mitchell is doing his magic uh, and, and making it sound awesome. Uh, so thank you both so much. Really quickly, uh, to kind of give folks a, a, a precursor, right? Go, go back a year and talk about how you guys got involved with Rosie the Riveters and, and maybe even take a step back from that. Talk about what Rosie Riveters actually is and, and how it helps young girls get connected to the STEM uh, industries. So Rosie Riveters was something that Penny Sittler, actually the old Vixen Women's Council chair, she had seen an article about a STEM program and we were trying to figure out STEM outreach and how we could get involved and Erica and I had met for the first time and discussed um, what we could do for the AV industry. And one of that, one of those things was STEM outreach. And so we looked into Rosie Riveters and they are an incredible organization. And they already had, we didn't need to reinvent the wheel basically. They already had this incredible outreach program where they follow girls throughout their education and their entire careers, where they are trying to get them involved in STEM, let them know they can do it. They send out a productive struggle through different STEM kits, lessons plans. They have rosy labs. They have all these different programs for these girls to know that they do belong in STEM. Erica, talk for a second about what, how, why STEM is significant to the, the AV industry. And, and the reason I, I, asked, I, I asked that question is because there are some folks in the AV industry who may look at STEM, and STEM, of course, is science, technology, engineering, and, and medicine. They'll look at that and go, okay, well, what does that have to do with AV? What does STEM have to do with AV? So at a very basic level, it's built on the technology that we all love and that drives us into the industry in the first place. We need those innovators and those young minds to look at the experiences that we're creating, either from a programming standpoint. You know, everything we do is, you know, the the technology around us is what inhibits those experiences. And uh, that's our main focus in STEM is that, that technology and, and engineering. Jennifer, last year, you're, you started with a goal, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you started with a goal of $5,000. Yes. That was, that was your original goal. Where did you end up last year? So we started with that $5,000 goal, which would just get us one city, and we were challenged. Well, we first had a title sponsor, which is Bradford Ben from Advocist, and then um, we went over to you, Tim, basically, with CTI, who challenged us and uh, put our goal up to 30000 and we surpassed that with 35000 last year. All right, very cool. And and so where are we at for this year's goal based on last year's goal of thirty five thousand? We're at thirty thousand. So okay. we're we have a stretch goal of fifty thousand because we really were so impressed with the A V industry. And even Brittany Greer, who's in charge over there at Rosie Riveters, let us know that the A V industry is one of the top industries as far as standing up for Rosie Riveters. Erica, you, 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 Jennifer mentioned the fact that, that the, the, the original goal last year was for $5,000 to get one city. What, what would, even the, the, the 50000 which we'll talk about in a second, what were you guys able to do with those 30, 000, that $30,000 last year? How many locations, how many cities were you guys able to engage with? Yeah, so when we say 
five thousand dollars for one city. It's actually for one in entire elementary school is what that five thousand gets us. So that being said, we were able to engage in four cities across the country. So we were in uh, San Diego, in the Mid Atlantic, Atlanta, and in Dallas. And we still have a, another one planned coming up in the spring once the snow melts um, for some of the the colder states up in the Northeast. Um, so ultimately five cities total is what came out of last year's giving and we still had some left over. So, I mean, th the more we can give is always the better. So this year's goal of 30,000 will just help us to re-engage it with those students and those cities that we were already in just to make sure that we have this lasting impact. We keep showing up and we just, we don't contribute once and then we leave them high and dry. Um, yeah. So that 30,000 will help us to re-engage there and our stretch goal of 50,000 will help us to expand into more cities uh, nationwide and hopefully eventually it'll actually be globally too. I know we have a, a couple of businesses in England um, that want to help out and expand out there too. You said something there that I, I want to hit on for a second. You said you use, use the term re-engage. Why is that important? Why is it important to re-engage with those same locations? So there is a there's multiple studies that are done on this, but if you ask children to draw a scientist and they give a gender to a scientist, at age six, a girl will 75% of the time draw a female scientist. And by the time she's 10, 75% of the time, she'll make it a male scientist. So there's something that's happening in their brains, either subconsciously or, um, you know, they, they have this unconscious bias that scientists are men or people in that technological field are men. And that six to age range is the perfect time for us to intervene and keep reinforcing the fact that women belong in these scientific fields. Jennifer, from a, a practical standpoint, I guess is the best way to ask this, and, and I, I know the answer to this, but I wanna get this out there. What exactly are we doing? What, what are you guys doing when it comes to Dallas, let's say, or, or, or San Diego? like? Are we giving them computers? Like what, what is e each of that, that $5,000 helping do? So the STEM kits are getting our foot in the door. And when we're teaching, like last year, it was introducing computer languages. So how computers <clears throat> speak to each other. So just through that binary coding, we were saying, hey, just letting you know, STEM is a thing. This is how computers speak to each other. And we want to talk to you about the AV industry. And they really genuinely did not know the AV industry existed or it would be a career they could follow since there's no real career path into AV. And they were really excited about everything our industry has to offer. We had one sheets that told them, hey, have you ever been to a concert? Guess what? That's an AV industry thing. So, um, I mean, Erica has a story of how it went in Atlanta, how she was able to connect with the kids. Do you want to tell them that? Sure. So we went, um, you were able to host our packing party and then I went and helped with the delivery and helping with the students actually building the binary coding kits and explaining what was going on. And of course they had no idea what AV was, but being able to ask questions like, do you talk to the Skylar to turn on your lights? I can't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens more often than you think. That's hilarious. <laughs> But the idea that you can program these devices in your house to function, to turn off and turn off. And, you know, if they ever see a, a, a movie that is more like uh, they see fancy shades going up and down from the press of a button. Or if you went back to like Minority Report and you see people like with these command and control centers, that is AV. And that's when they start to have those aha moments like, oh, my gosh, there's actually a, a way to get into that kind of field. And that was, it. it's exciting because you can really make it relatable for them in a super basic way. Yeah, absolutely. When you look, guys look at this, and, and again, this is, this is only your second year, and, and I would say uh, just from an outsider looking in, you're growing and you're, being more, you're, you're, you're already being successful with this. Where do you see the, the kind of the, the other end of this in, in five, six, seven years with some of these elementary school kids that you're you're dealing with now and you're, you're connecting with now where do you see them on the other end of this 
Well, they end up actually taking more advanced um, programs through Rosie Riveters. So it's called, there's some Rosie Labs where they can actually get into actual coding and actual programming. So right now we're basically using metaphors in a way, showing them like this, the binary coding was through building bracelets, the black and white beads were the yes and no, the on and off. And in the future, they're able to take more advanced programs that they have the same productive struggle, but it shows them that they could actually do this in a real world scenario. I think ultimately, too, this goes back to this whole idea of we have this gender gap. We all know that the gender gap exists in technology and and in AV. And while we're not looking at 10 years down the road, we're definitely looking at 15, 20 years down the road. We can't change gender gap in the next two to three years, but we can certainly start laying a pathway that makes it more accessible for the next generation of AV to, to come into the industry. I want to hit on something really quickly before we, we get into how people give. You, you're, you're connecting with and you're delivering these to, to elementary schools. What has been the reaction and the feedback you've gotten from those schools and from those schools' admi- administrators? The schools love it. Um, we've had re-engagement requests from multiple schools in California and at, in Atlanta. Um They're excited that they're getting programming that they don't have to pay for. The teachers don't have to think extra to come up with a new activity and make it relevant to their existing coursework. And it's an extra enrichment activity for them as well, because we're we're also, as opposed to, you know, only focusing on the problem solving, we're also working on fine fine motor skills and um, critical thinking because they're working from a finished example. They're not you know, they have that productive struggle to actually build the thing, whatever the kit is. In our case, it was binary coding. Um, but there, we're hitting so many aspects that all of those schools have really received not just the kits well, but also our involvement and in asking for, um, what was it in, in Dallas? They had an assembly before school yeah. one day. Yeah, they were actually able to have an assembly where two of the Avixa Women's Council local leaders were able to go and talk to them about the AV mm. industry. So it's more than just, we. of course, they're being sent home with a one sheet on AV. But when you actually have two women there showing you, you can be, you can't, can't be what you can't see. So if you have two women there that are successful in the AV industry and are happy enough in the AV industry that they're giving back, it shows these girls that they can do it. Yes, you can. No, that's pretty, and, and very, very well. I, I like the, the yes, you can. <laughs> Erica, if somebody is interested, and in, in, again, you guys are have got a, a goal significantly bigger than, than last year's goal to, to start <laughs> off with, um, how do people get involved? How do they give? How do they even find out more about about this program? So the one location that hosts all of that information is avgives.com. Um, you can, it'll go directly to the GoFundMe to give just like last year where you can get your tax deductible documentation. Um, you also have opportunities to host events if you're a, a corporate sponsor and you want to use your space. If you're an individual, obviously we do support individual contributions, but if you just want to share or if you want to volunteer in these local areas as well, both of those are, are needed (laughs) more than anything. So I would say you, again, you guys are your, you, your goal is 30,000. I a hundred percent applaud the stretch goal of 50,000. And I think that we, as an industry should help you reach, uh, reach that 50,000, uh, I'm not going to do what I did to you last year and, and say, oh, you should do 100000 Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, as, as we wrap up here, what's, what's one thing that you would tell somebody? And, and let's talk to the corporate folks for a second, right? Certainly individuals, uh, as Erica said, are, are more than welcome and 100% should encourage everybody to, to go and give what they can on that. But, but let's talk to the corporate uh, individuals here. Nearly every company that I am aware of, and this goes from manufacturing all the way through uh, integrators, right, and everybody in between, we are all looking for folks, right? We all have openings that we are trying to fill. Talk to somebody who's who's looking at their at their job postings going, I don't know where to get, you know, I, I don't know where to get people. Talk to them about how important this is to fund and fuel the next generation and the next funnel 
of individuals who could become your next, you know, star tech or star programmer? Yeah. Uh, so it's no longer just a guessing game. If diversity helps us all, it has been proven that through countless studies that diversity helps all of us. It helps all corporations. They are more successful. They are more profitable. So if you want to have a more diverse team, you have to do something to change it. Like Erica said, we're not necessarily going to change this in the next two to three years, but we have to do something. And if we want to be more successful as an industry as a whole, we have to embrace diversity. And embracing diversity isn't just saying we embrace diversity. And that's, just, that's to answer your question as a company, it's not just saying I embrace diversity. You do have to go out there and recruit women and Looking at Rosie Riveters, that's uh, what they do. They follow these girls' career paths, and we're hoping that by the time these girls are graduating, we can offer them jobs within our industry. AVGives.com, Rosie Riveters, uh, the second year around. So congratulations to you guys on a very successful first year, and, and here is to another one. Um, Erica, uh, Carol, and Jennifer Goodyear, thank you both so much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Uh, for us, for AV Nation, you can go by our website and find these two young ladies hosting um, Women in AV, but also we'll put a link to avgives.com on, on this episode's page. So that's all we have for this AV Nation special. <laughs>